ChatGPT have just released their latest model, 5.2, and it says down here, we're in introducing 5.2, the most capable series yet for professional knowledge work. Ooh, that is us, isn't it? We produce the knowledge, so we have to work with it. That's knowledge work. So is it any good for academia and research? Well, it is and it isn't. This is the test. All right then, so when you sign in, this is what it first looks like. You've got ChatGPT 5.2 up here, you've got Auto, you've got Instant, and you've got Thinking. And you've also got access to all of the legacy models if you so desire. But ultimately, I think that most people probably will want to sort of just say Auto for a lot of this, unless you're doing sort of like the literature review, the literature searching, the planning and execution of ideas, then you want to sort of click thinking. And I think that's where a lot of the higher end academic tasks um, really sit. So you do need to turn it on. You'll see in a minute why you need to turn it on, particularly for generating PowerPoints for images, that sort of stuff. All right then, so let's go through the test. The first thing I wanted to do is see if it could get just simple data and simple references. So here I said, find me 10 new peer reviewed papers about OPB devices and improved efficiency. I left it on auto. It could do it quickly. It could do it long, whatever. It doesn't matter. But here we've got, here are 10 recent peer reviewed papers reporting improved OPV device efficiency. And let me tell you, I was pretty impressed with what it found. So it found recent papers it gives me a little bit of like a blurb on why it's there so 19 percent 20.5 percent 20.8 percent yeah and i clicked on them and they all existed and they all said what they were uh, meant to say so it did only look at the abstracts i think but ultimately if you're just doing a very quick literature search easy it does it well great but it gets even better check this out now, in the past, ChatGPT has really struggled with graphical abstracts, so I wanted to know if this one was any better. So, I put in an abstract here, electrodes fabricated, blah blah blah, this is just one of my papers, and here I said create a graphical abstract illustration for this peer-reviewed paper abstract. Oh, there's a lot of words in that, doesn't it? But this is what it produced, and let me tell you, this is head and shoulders above what it used to produce. I actually really like the style, it's understood it. Look, some of it, it doesn't need to be in there, but you can use Canva to delete some of these things, move it around a little bit. But ultimately, that is a really, really good graphical abstract for putting in an abstract and getting something in a graphical form. And in the past, it has really struggled with this. And uh, I'm very, very impressed with this. I would use a version of this, not this. I would take it to Canva and like delete things and get rid of things. I'll do another video on how to do that, I think, because this is so great. And the ability to actually graphically explain your research has now opened up to everyone and I love that. All right then, so that is something that has really, really improved, but not everything has got better. Hmm like this. We all love a cheeky little literature review and it seems to be a good benchmark for these sort of upgrades. So here I said, write a detailed literature review about nanocomposite transparent electrodes. Simple, easy, let's see what it did. And then it said, okay, what do you actually want me to do? And this is something that we're similar to the agents that were released to ask some clarifying questions. And we like that. It can be a little bit annoying, but you do have to go through their process. Um, and here it says, um, I would like for a range of applications so I just answered this. I just clicked this one, dictate, and I just sort of like answered their questions. I didn't sort of like spend too much time thinking about it one by one, but you can if you're that sort of person. Um, and then it went away and it did some stuff. So it completed it in 10 minutes. It found 22 sources and it did 68 searches. If you click there, it pops up over here and you can see the activity as well as the 22 sources. All of these sources exist. It's well referenced, but the literature review that it created is okay. Like, it's long, it's detailed, it lacks tables, something like Gemini, other tools, size space, uh, consensus, give us rich data. This really didn't give us rich data. It did a, a good job at laying out the actual words and the content, but in terms of all of the extra stuff that now we really, really have to expect from these sort of tools, because other tools are doing it better, it's really lacking. So if you have to do a literature review, I'd probably use something else at the moment.
management, um, like size space consensus also does really well. Um, but yeah, ultimately, hmm, I'm not sure whether this is something that I would use because another thing you can't do which is really frustrating is export it i want to now work with this i can only copy it across to something and look this stuff i need this to be referenced better i need like an uh the ability to reference it in the way that's applicable to my field and this isn't it so it is a little bit of a pain to work with this literature review so it didn't do great and it also didn't do great at some other things hmm like this I was feeling a little bit confident with the old cheeky graphical generation. I was like, now is the time we can use it to generate a PowerPoint poster. They've always struggled in the past with posters. And I was like, now's the time. I've got, I got a feeling in my bones. And this is what happened. So here, I just said, turn this paper into a poster presentation for a conference. And here it is. Nice, simple PDF. And this is something a lot of people have to do all the time, and it's a bit of a pain, but this is what it generated. Well, it gave me text initially, and I was like, Ugh, don't just give me text, I want more stuff. So I think it actually pulled out a relatively good uh, like text for the poster, but what it didn't do is give me the design. And so I was like, hmm, okay, well, yeah, the next steps, this is what I want. Design this into a PowerPoint poster. So I said, design this into a PowerPoint poster. And <laughs> this is what it gave me. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> I, I would actually love to just print this off and take this to a uh, poster presentation because <laughs> it's so bad. It's so, so bad. I, oh God, it's so bad. So yeah, it did, really didn't do that very well. Um, I actually wanted to know if it could turn it into a PowerPoint presentation. I thought, well, maybe it will do well at a PowerPoint presentation. So I said, turn this paper into a PowerPoint presentation for a conference. And then it says, great, I've done it. And it only sort of like did it quickly. And that's because I didn't put it on thinking. And uh, when it did this, it was like, oh, well, there we are. <laughs> That's rubbish. Once again, I would actually find it quite fun to go to a conference with this presentation and just see what would happen. If I can do that, I'm going to do that in the future. That would be funny. But look, it's just, yeah, it's just words. There's nothing to it. And I thought, ah, oh, I know I did it wrong. I did it wrong. I didn't have it on thinking. So I turned it on thinking and then I said, do it again, essentially. Turn this paper into well-designed and I had thinking turned on. And the good thing about thinking, actually, so here you can see you've got auto instant thinking. When you turn on thinking, you also get a couple of options for how much to think, standard or extended. I left this on standard um, just to see what it could do. And this is what it produced. Um, it is better, it is definitely better, but we're so tantalizingly close to a good one, but so, so far away. That's just where we are at the moment. So here we are. This is what it produced. I like the like layout and the, the um, design of it here. Yeah, not great, but okay. And then it goes into madness. It just devolves into some rubbish. Look at that. I mean, look at this. So what's it done there? I don't even know what it's done there. And then look, look at the layout, all of the stuff. But this could be a good place for you to start. This is what I mean by it's getting tantalizingly close because it pulled out an actual table from the paper and it gave me the key results. So this is a great slide. This is almost genius. This is what I want for all the slides. And then it just gets bad again. And then it's like, well, I tried my best. Uh, well, maybe this, I don't know. You can try your best. Uh, well, this one, yeah, I just decided this bit was the most important bit of the figure. So yeah, it, like I said, it's so tantalizingly close, but so far away at the moment that you couldn't use this as it stands at the moment. But it, it, it's got signs that it could be good, and I wanted to push it to its limits, and that's what I did next. Now, we need to take a little bit of a detour into something like SciSpace. This is what I did in SciSpace in their agent mode and I said put all dinosaur field study locations in Africa on an interactive map and it did all of the stuff it found things and this is what it produced look at this this is brilliant it's a website yes it's got all of the stuff it's got a geological timeline and then view interactive map it's an interactive map and this was a single prompt I can click there get some information oh I absolutely love that that is what I was after I think this is a great sort of like higher end agent output 
So I was like, I want to be able to do this. If we can open up this sort of thing to every researcher, the communication, the interaction with data will clearly get better. And I was like, okay, chat GPT 5.2. Let's see if you can do it. And uh, I put it in and I said, create an interactive web app with the showcasing the African paleontological research areas and findings. Oh, let's see what it did. It spat out loads of code and then it just stopped. And that was it. And then it said, oh, sorry, it's gone on too long. Uh, done. Oh, it actually finished. This, so it finished when I wasn't looking, by the way, because before it said, oh, canvas is too long. I can't continue, which is this bit. And then if I click preview, African Paleontological Explorer interactive web app. It's installing packages. So we want to see something that's really, really good. So I got an error message before, and this is what it generated. So is it <laughs> Africa? Like, you know, okay, it's it's stylized. You can click here and see some things. It did better than I was about to tell you <laughs> because I didn't realize it had finished. I got an error message before, um, but um, yeah, this is uh, like, okay. You know what I mean? Like it shows you what you want it to show. I've got a list, I've got a timeline. Yeah, it's done a pretty good job at giving me an interactive web app. Um, and yeah, okay, we, we like it, it's fine. But is it as good as this? Probably not. Which means if you want to do agent-focused academic tasks, you're better off using something like SciSpace at the moment because it understands academia, it gives you proper references, and it gives you a better output. Um, so yeah, at the moment, 5.2 is a great upgrade, and it's so awesomely close to being good but uh, yeah, the other tools for academia and research, they're winning out at the moment. Let me know in the comments if you have used 5.2 and what you think its standout features are. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the top AI toolkit that every single researcher should use. Love it.